Oh, this is a really good one. This is a good one. This is a good one. Hey guys, so today I'm making a very, very different video than I usually do. Usually I'm down the yard with the horses. Today is just me. My dogs are over there, but um, oh no, just I just have to talk about him. He comes over. Say hello, Bobby. So today I decided to make a video where I read my hate comments. I thought this would be somewhat entertaining, might be a bit of um, nice venting for me too. <laughs> and I also saw Hannah um, Lucy HL Hate Equestrian do it on her channel and it was very entertaining. Um, unfortunately I'm lacking the beer that she had but um, but yeah. So before I get into it I just wanted to say first basically just talk about why I don't want constructive criticism and like it makes sense in my head but obviously it doesn't make sense to a lot of other people so I'm just gonna put this out out there and link them to this video when they start critiquing me. So the reason I don't want constructive criticism, any sort of criticism, is because I don't know who is sending me that advice like these people are just completely random strangers that just see my video they're just from the internet when you click onto their channel the vast majority of them have no um videos of them riding no kind of um references or background or qualifications and i think it would actually be really really unwise for me to take advice from people i have no idea who they are like what if they tell me, to, like they give me advice with some exercise for a horse or some feeding advice or something and I do it and then if I just follow that advice blindly like it could be really detrimental for the horse like they don't know the horse so it's not even their fault half the time it's very hard Um, like I even don't like it when people ask me for advice really because I don't know the horse, I'm not there it's a very very tricky situation giving advice online and I really don't think people should do it unless like the person that wants advice is sending you actual videos of the whole training session and I think that if you ask like you give advice if your advice is worth giving you're probably not going to be giving it for free like there's lots of trainers that do do online training but you pay for it because they're qualified they're experienced they know what they're talking about it they know what they're talking about and then of course they charge you because of course they would you don't get top quality advice for free so that's why when people send me crit crit criticism and then i go i'm not going to take your advice because i don't know you they're like you should be able to take constructive criticism, blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't think you should give constru constructive criticism online. I think you should be very careful if you do, because what if you give advice and then that person goes along and does it, but maybe doesn't carry it out appropriately, or it's the wrong advice for that specific situation, and then they go and get hurt. I think it's just a dangerous, dangerous game to play, and I'm not keen on giving out advice. If someone asks me, I'll try my best, but I'll always say, but I think you should get a trainer because it's just not the same. So yes, that is my um, my rant. Um, why do people get so annoyed if anything bad happens when someone's riding, when there's actual horses actually being abused? And then these people come in and they're like, oh, you use a bit or you use a saddle or you use a, this specific type of bit and you're abusing this horse and you're like, instead of writing these comments you should do something actually proactive for the horses who are actually being abused like I don't want to get on my high horse or whatever but I'm still going to be a vet I'm going to be helping a lot of animals like come on now what are you doing are you just like be a little keyboard warrior and that I don't know I'm probably rubbing a lot of people up the wrong way but it really annoys me when people start saying that I'm abusing my horses and I see on other people's videos too and it's so frustrating and it's so horrible for the person receiving it like it's so unnecessary Please, I know, maybe just think twice before you write a comment on someone's video. Even if you think you're helping, are you actually, are you going to make a difference? Like, maybe your energy be, would be better spent in a different area, maybe volunteering for some charities or raising money or something. Um, I don't know, I think that would just be a kind of a better use of your time. And honestly, if you don't like someone's style of training, 
unless, of course, if they are abusing their horses, you should li you should like report them. If it's bad enough to be reported, report them. If not, I think you should just click off and just don't watch them and save yourself the heartache. <laughs> right, <laughs> now let's get on to the fun part, which is actually reading these hate comments. <laughs> Great, can't wait. Ah, here's a good one. This one has some science, so for any of you guys like, studying for exams, this is proof that these videos, YouTube videos, are 100% a form of study because you're going to get some physics in this in this one. Constructive criticism in quotations, not really sure why. Here we go! <laughs> they just seem so excited. <laughs> Show jumping is the worst you can do to a horse's legs. Asks physics or publications why. In a nutshell, 600 kilograms divided by 1,300 pounds. Oh wait, no, I think it's or God, okay, and that was stupid. Um, with a height um, of just one meter means a massive amount of force onto one hoof. Horses land on one hoof. Um, the horse is landing with according to force equals mass by acceleration. There's some nice formulas for you. In the middle ages of a horse... <laughs> I thought they were about to say in the middle ages, like in the past. Okay, never mind. Of a horse's life, there there may be no issues, but when it gets older, you'll see what you did. Or you sell your horse. Like sports equipment. Love humanity. Heart. I just love the sass and like the backhandedness of this one. Like, love humanity. <laughs> I just can imagine them so angry type things. <laughs> but yeah. You know, I just sell my horse like sports equipment. Um, unlike sports equipment, we actually have to spend a lot of money maintaining them. But uh, yeah, I'd say they're they just about equate to sports equipment. <laughs> and um, you see, you don't see like top show jumpers, you know, in their late teens still jumping Grand Prix because they're obviously all crippled, and that just happens because we abuse our horses by jumping them. Ah, this is a good one. You don't want criticism, but you post publicly. Shutting down free speech is not good. If the person is just hating, we will see it. If it's real criticism, then we can recognize that as well. Please do not cry, poor me, I've been criticized. Free speech is an important part of life. Learning to communicate is important. I also love how this has 12 likes. So this is another thing I see all the time is that because you post publicly, then you should just completely accept every kind of criticism that anyone says and I just don't believe that I think that's just wrong like if you have kind of like kind of morals or if you're a nice person you're not gonna go attack people like and then go well you post it online so I have every right to do this like yeah you have a right to say whatever you want but like okay this is going back to my like primary school like ethics class but you have rights and responsibilities guys you have a right for spe free speech, but you also have a responsibility not to be an asshole, and like, that's just common sense. Uh, yeah, you, you have the right to say whatever you want on my YouTube channel, but um, I would hope that you're a responsible enough person that you just won't. Like, you'll just move on and not be, like, mean. I don't know, like, I, it's this equestrian community. We are all horrible people, is what I've learned from being on YouTube. All equestrians, all of them, including me, <laughs> everyone. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> I like them all. They're all great. <laughs> this one says, um, I'm sorry if I'm being super rude, but does this horse not look really awkward to anyone? It's so long in the back. It's a really solid horse, but also has such a weak hind end. It's really strange. Enough it matches, very unbalanced, moves so awkwardly, really choppy and not flowing. Um, I actually replied, you're right, you are being pretty rude. <laughs> because... I love how they like, I'm sorry if I'm being super rude. Like if someone says, I'm sorry if I'm being rude, but like they know it's a rude, like, like you just know they're gonna say something mean. Like you just know it. And so do they apparently, because if you say I'm sorry in advance of saying something, you know it's not a nice thing to say. Um, oh, I like this one. She commented on two, two videos like really soon, one after another. So I have both of them. One of them is just so many times behind the vertical line, dot dot dot, and like one minute after it was posted it had a like and it was on a really old video, so come on girl, we all know you liked your own comments, but you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be petty, we're not gonna bring this up. 
But I, yeah, it was on um, Cal's video because he's only just broken and he dropped behind the vertical a uh, few times and apparently this is like the end. I should be fired and never let to touch horses ever again. You know, it happens. Then she also commented on my lunging video. She said, this attached flash strap makes me aggressive. I uh, wish I could put it on your head slash mouth to look how do you feel when you can't open your mouth apart from the lunge in the bit ring so not really sure what she's trying to come like trying to articulate here but um basically she doesn't like lunging with any kind of equipment oh no it yeah she doesn't like the flash she doesn't like that um yeah flashes the whole debate about flashes I use them kind of loosely, um, I'm going to use them if I have to. And I don't think they should be used really, really tightly. I think you should be able to fit two fingers in them. And if you're able to fit two fingers in them, a horse's mouth is able to move. They're just not able to open their mouth. Uh, this is um, one of Fiona's progress video. Put a harsh bit in any horse's mouth and they'll fight you. It's not their mistake, it's yours. Um, this is actually a good one for this video because at the start of the video she has a bit and she fights it. We used a rubber bit, she fought it, and then I trained her, we got progress, and now I use a bit and she doesn't fight it. Um, so I don't think it's the bit that inherently makes her angry. I would like that person to answer the question, why is she fighting at the start and not fighting at the end when she has a bit in both times? Let's just, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. This is one um, on me riding well back. Um, she says, I get that this is supposed to be a funny video. It did make me laugh a couple of times. Thanks. <laughs> I can't take my attention off the fact that her hands are really hard and her horse isn't soft in the mouth. So some background to this video. I thought it was really funny. It's the video where my, it's called My Dad Is Annoying Me For Four Minutes Straight. So my dad like did a funny voiceover or whatever and like I really appreciated him doing that. I didn't ask him to do that before but I kind of wish he had done it like not that day because that was like her first time jumping after being off for so long and she was so fresh. She just wanted to gallop and I there was loads of com comments on this video going stop being so harsh with your hands. I don't actually understand what people want me to do because if I'm not, if I don't hold her back she will gallop. I've let her gallop before. I've loosened my reins when she wanted to take off and she has galloped laps and laps and laps and laps and laps, 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 laps. She never stops. She's crazy like. She's, she's gas. But it's only when she's fresh. And then when she's jumping, back jumping, back working, everything, she settles down. She's really easy. She's really controllable. I don't have to use like any pressure, like much pressure. And that's just like life. This happens every year. She comes back into work. She gets really hot. I have to ride her, get her back into work, and eventually she just slows down and gets back into the rhythm of things, and that's just the way she is. So, <sighs> Bianca, watch my other videos when she's soft. Oh, here's one. Oh yeah, this um Fiona's one year transformation thing. A lot of people, a lot of people, had a problem with me like naming the title Problem Horse to 1 meter 20 show jumper. I thought Problem Horse was just like a generic term for a horse that, you know, had like some kind of behavioral training problems that just like, you know, acts up whatever. But people are like not happy. They're thinking I'm like blaming her and everything like this. Like if you listen to the video, I completely explain like that she just didn't understand what I was asking and like we just worked through it. Um, but anyway, this person's comment. Fiona was never a problem horse, just uneducated having a rider on her. This isn't true, she's been broken, it's not that she was never ridden before. Such clickbait. <laughs> Such clickbait. <laughs> um, anyway, obviously everyone's riding could improve and I love watching your videos, obviously not, but you could be so much better with a good trainer. Any horse being ridden when not giving clear instruction can be a bit questionable to the rider, but she has such a scope, talented horse. So basically what this person is implying is that at the start of the video my riding was really bad and that's why she was bad, and then at the end of the video my riding got better and that's why she improved. Like that's not what happened. 
like well obviously my writing would improve over like a few months because like I'm hoping I'm on like a, a slowly increasing scale of writing ability but like I had to train her like we taught her to be good and to understand what I'm saying Anyway, obviously we didn't need a trainer at the time because now she's going really well and she's jumping 120s and she's a really good horse, so yeah, I just, I just, you know. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> I keep saying that. So this person was nice and said, her progress is really a testament to your good horsemanship, patience and care. You look harmonious together. Good job. <laughs> I love that. I, w I wish I felt harmonious when I was writing. Um, but then this person replied and said, Ever look at her feet? No wonder she was resisting. She kicks her horses with the back of her heels. Um, I just kind of wanted some clarification on this. If you don't want me to kick with the back of my heels, I should I kick with my toe, the front of my heels, the side of my heels. Like the heel is the back of your foot. There is no side to your heel, it's just the back. <laughs> if I would do that, my trainer would whip me out of the stables. So apparently in her stables, no one has ever kicked a horse, ever, ever. They all move off the lightest of touches and also by dangling a carrot in front of their nose. And I don't even mean when the horse buckled. I presume bucked, but I don't think she actually really bucked in the video. Um, even when she was jumping, if Fiona did well, she twisted her heels towards her belly. If that's good horsemanship, I'm going to participate in the Olympics tomorrow. I hope you do. <laughs> no age should be held and pressed against the horse on any time. Even if she would want to engage her back more, that's simply wrong. Okay, I'm not really sure that what that sentence really meant. Um, she really needs to work on her legs and feet. Her, she kind of hugs the horse while ri riding. I thought your legs should hug around the horse because then they're still and they're not moving. Would you rather my leg was like flapping and like hitting off her accidentally? Horsemanship is about teamwork and friendship. Hmm, that's deep. Um, the goal is to be less of a burden and that your horse likes to work with you. Um, I agree. If it isn't mere laziness, the fault is most likely on the rider's part in that case, clearly. Again, not sure what that meant. Um, she even binds her head while working on the lunge. Binds her, that's new, that's a bit kinky, binding. <laughs> uh, yes, it wasn't binding, I had like a elastic bungee on her for lunging. So. Anyway, you can look at my lunging video if you want to hear my thoughts on lunging. Um, if you force, you will get resistance. You don't want a broken horse, you want a horse who is eager to learn. <sighs> that was just a whole essay, wasn't it? Um, so yeah, I was. There was one clip of me visibly kicking her, and that is when she was rearing. She reared vertical, and I was afraid she'd fall back. And I was trying to get her to move forward because when a horse rears, you want them to move forward because a horse can't rear when they're walking forwards. They can't do two. They can't go forward and rear at the same time. So when a horse rears, my priority is to get them moving, 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 and that's why I was kicking her to get her to go forward. And then she trotted forward and then she stopped rearing. So that, that's why I kicked her in that clip. Um, oh, another person com replied to the same, um, the nice comment, um, saying, try not to rely on the bit or your hands. You should be improving your riding and your seat instead of skipping all the steps and going to a cheat. You shouldn't be putting your horse in harsher bits when things aren't going right, instead of just staying calm and having some fun time with her. Oh, B. Curry Snyder. I wish it was that easy. Yes, when we go to shows and Fiona sees jumps and has a huge long stride and it's like a two stride double and she does it in one stride and you feel like you're gonna die. You know what I should have done? I should have just stayed calm and had some fun. I should have just like embraced it. Uh, so yeah, no. For safety's sake I did have to use a palm for jumping um, and we're slowly starting to try and switch her back to a snuffle. Yes, that's how bitting works. We, you might have to move up, but the goal is always to go back to the softest bit, like a snaffle. Here's one. I'm not hating. Oh look, they're, they're not hating. Guys, why am I writing out this comment? They're not even hating. But. But. B. 
Bits are really bad for horses. They're so commonly used now, we forget how invasive and harmful they can be. Not in unincluding, not unincluding, the bruising on their gums sometimes and some we can't see. Like I said, they're very invasive and not needed. There are lots of alternatives like hackamores and side pulls. I really recommend at least trying them. My horse loves his hackamore lots more than his old bit. Please at least consider. Thanks. Smiley face. So yeah, I love how she says bits put a lot of pressure on them. So you should use a hackamore. Like people don't realize hackamores can be really, really strong. Like people use hackamores with like curb chains and then hackamores have long shanks so it's like loads of pull pressure and like hackamores can be very strong. Side pulls, well there's a different type. Some cross under the chin, again more pressure. Like it pressure is pressure. Bitless bridles have pressure. Without pressure you can't convey a message to a horse. Like they need some sort of like stimulus so that you get a response out of it. Like if there's no... Yeah, anyway. Um, so invasive and harmful. Invasive, I think the fact that it's in their mouth as opposed to around their face makes people say invasive, but like, no. <laughs> um, I'm just going to direct you to Shelby Dennis's bit debate video because that, that was a pretty good one, you know, lots of actual facts in there. And yeah, I just, people think bits are inherently, I've, I've heard this, inherently like painful like no if you if a horse has a bit in its mouth it's not in pain like i had braces for like two years and i like you stop feeling you don't feel the brace like you don't go oh i can feel metal in my mouth like for two years like it doesn't work like that yeah if like a little wire goes loose and like sticks into your cheek and you think you're absolutely dying and you can't eat yeah that's painful <laughs> but bits don't have little spiky wires well they shouldn't anyway don't know what kind of bits you're using. This was a whole theme, theme that happened for a while on my dad's video of him riding. People were critiquing his riding. Are you kidding me? He's been riding for like, he's ridden her three times. So he's ridden three times. And the last, like, I can't remember the last time he rode before those three times. Like it was years ago. And people are going like, he's sitting so stiff and leaning too much forward. Laughing, crying face. like. Obviously, he's just started right. He's a beginner. <laughs> like, why do people want to like critique beginners' writing on like things that they obviously aren't just gonna like get in two seconds? Oh, because you said that now, he's just suddenly gonna be perfect position all the time. Like it doesn't work like that. It takes practice. You know, you have to actually improve. God, if if you could just fix things like this in two seconds, I would be such a better writer. And I wish it worked like that. Oh, this was, this was a good one. Stupid question. <laughs> but why are you setting your dad up to fail and fall? Those stirrups are way too short for him and he's going to hurt his body and the horse's back. Tell him how to ride by how to fail. Also, you shouldn't be using a bit. He's pretty heavy and tight on those reins. Your horse is pretty unhappy. Just tossing that out there. I just love the word of this comment like. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I was definitely telling my dad to fail. Obviously, if he had fallen off, do you know how many more views that video would have gotten? I obviously wanted him to fail, and I obviously wanted him to really hurt my horse in the process. Duh. So this one is on Wellbeck's video when she was really hot, and it says, not to sound rude or anything, but... See the trend? Do you see the trend? Yeah. I would just keep her going after the jump and stop stopping her as it would give her bad habits and every time you go after, over the jump she will think she can act up and then will stop. If you keep her going and use leg then she, she will keep on going and hopefully stop acting up after clearing the jump XX smiley face because they're not being rude and they don't want to sound rude. So this is like a perfect example of what I was saying before. Like if I took this advice it would not end well. That's why you can't give advice over online when you don't know the horse. So what was happening in the video is that she would jump the jump and she would try and run off. So I would ask her to slow down and she'd kind of shake her head and toss and we'd stop because I was trying to get her to think after the jump, we're going to slow down now. It's stopping time. Um, so this girl says, 
and then you should land the jump and put a leg on. If I put leg, oh, I wish I was back in the scenario and I could put leg on and show her the video of what would happen. Well, they would gallop off, like she would. Because this girl, like it's not her fault, she thinks that Welbeck throwing her head around is her acting up. It's not, it's her responding to me trying to slow her down. If I landed after a jump and horse booked or whatever and kind of got a bit choppy, yeah, I would put leg on then to try and get them out of it and move them out of it. But that's not what was happening here. And she doesn't realize that. That's just a perfect example of why you can't really give good advice online. It's, it's hard. Like, you don't know the situation, you don't know the horse, and you're not riding the horse. It's very hard. So this is just, this was just a good example of why. Give me advice. It's just, I don't, don't do it unless you're asked for it. This was, I don't know, a funny, like, I thought this was just a weird comment. This, oh, this is all my dad's, my video of my dad riding. Um, this video would have been so much better if he really couldn't ride. I'm like, so one, some comments are saying that he's really bad, um, like giving him all this advice. And this comment says that he wasn't bad enough for it to be entertaining. <laughs> he wasn't bad enough for it to be entertaining. I love that. Like, Jessica wishes he fell off. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh, this is even better one. <laughs> Stop downgrading your father. He's pretty good at writing. He's not that bad. Stop downgrading. <laughs> this person thinks I'm bullying my dad, like... <laughs> oh, this is a really good one. This is a good one. This is a good one. Um, so this is on Indy's progress video, if you remember. Um, it was quite a while ago. So she would have this problem going past one of the walls, she like was afraid of it and she would always like turn her head out to look at it and it wouldn't like work well, she'd put her head up, or she didn't like going past it. And I was like, oh yeah, she was a bit afraid of it, so I just kept circling by her, like in the video I was explaining what I did and then she got used to it and then she was fine. And then this person, <clears throat> Evie Marioli, or should I say Dr. Evie Marioli, said she wasn't afraid of the wall. Horses have sensitive eye eyesight, and the lighting by the wall is different and hurt her eyes. I'm studying to become a horse vet, by the way. Well, Evie, have I got news for you. We're in the same course, honey. <laughs> so that's all I've got for today, because there's probably more, but um, this video is gone, gonna be really long, and yeah. I don't want to have to edit it for 5 million hours. I hope you got some enjoyment out of it. Like, I know, I thought it was kind of funny to just react to them and kind of get it out of my system a little bit because sometimes it's very hard not to reply to these people, but I've um, decided just to delete and block the comments now because um, <clears throat> there's absolutely no point in replying to these people, so I'm just going to make it entertainment instead and maybe earn some AdSense money off my haters. Please subscribe, like, comment, comment your favourite. Who of those internet trainers would you hire? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> See you guys.